Coming up on this weekend's broadcast, pork producers across the Corn Belt receive some unpleasant news. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for this week in agribusiness. I'm Mike Pearson in the studio this week, joined by Max Armstrong. And Max, it seems like spring has finally sprung. I think some farmers are encouraged by the increase in temperatures, simply because they've been putting that, uh, that grain into very cold soils. Yes. We like to check with folks this time of the year to see how things are going out there. And sometimes it's an elected official. We'll dial up. State Senator Rusty Black from the state of Missouri represents 16 counties in the northwest part of that state. Rusty, how have you been? Very good. We're getting close to the end of uh, our legislative session and it's time for me to go home and clean up some things around my little farm that have not been taken care of the last five months. And we hear this time of the year, many legislative sessions are trying to wrap up. Seems like there's a lot of work that gets jammed down there toward the, the 11th hour, it, it seems. Is that the case in Missouri? Yeah, the same thing. Part of it that, that we want to hate, but it's the way the system works. And there, there's good reasons why it works that way. It's just hard to keep track of all of it at times. Some of the farmers in your region I know have been planting for many weeks. I've seen their messages as they've sent them in email messages to me or texts, and uh, they're getting a lot of work done. Yes, certainly. The, the northern part of our state is really in good planting condition. You know, we've had some cold nights that people wish we didn't have. But of course, with seed treatments, et cetera, people are still going along. There's part of the central part of Missouri I know it's pretty dry. The seed beds got fairly dry and there are people that are waiting on beans till they get a little bit more moisture. But uh, well, that Northwest real bread basket of ground, it's going in. So hopefully the moisture shows up at the right time and we have a good productive year. So seed treatments have offered new opportunities for early planting. You still see a lot of nervous growers though when it comes to putting uh, corn kernels into a, a very cold <laughs> topsoil. Yeah. It, those kernels cost quite a bit of money each to lay into that cold soil, but uh, there's been quite a bit of it done and, and uh, we're starting to warm up. Hopefully we've got through the, the worst of the cold nights. One farmer told me this week the directions were to store that seed corn in a cold, dry place. He said he's doing that <laughs> in the topsoil. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the, the pork industry. There was news this week that Smithfield Foods is going to be closing some hog farms in your state. What do you know about that? Yes, well, those uh, hog farms, that announcement that came out, uh, two of the counties that those uh, hog farms are in, that Smithfield produce in, in the northern part of the state are in my Senate district, and it will have an impact. They're depopulating. I, I believe there was five sow facilities uh, in total. So it, it's going to hurt jobs in our area. Uh, I hope that it's something that because of the downtrend in the market right now, that no matter who you are in the pork industry, things aren't going very well with increased feed costs, the input costs. I, I know I was talking to a producer the other day, just to haul his livestock to the packing plant. I think he told me it was $1,000 a load and he's not very far away. So all those things combined has caused Smithville to make this decision. I do know from the information I've been provided, of course there's short enough workers like every industry is, there are plenty of places for this approximately 230 people to go to. It'll be just uh, a matter whether some of them decide that they, they can make those take advantage of those offers that Smithville is providing. Some of those will be within the local area, but some of them might mean they have to move. When you look at how the pendulum has swung in the pork industry going from fine profitability two or three years ago to the current times, there's a lot of red ink right now, isn't there? There, there certainly is. I've heard uh, good numbers of being a loss of $40 a head. Mm -hmm. That's the better stuff that I've been told. And and some over $60 a head loss per market hog. So uh, I understand the business decisions around it, but you know that's gonna have an impact on the local area. Of course, that has something to do, we talked about corn earlier, and you take uh, five of those production facilities out, that's that's some corn that's gonna to have to go somewhere else that in Southern Iowa and North Missouri has been going to these uh, production facilities. So it'll have some impact on that basis around home. 
There still is a fairly significant presence, is there not, that Smithfield Foods has in Missouri in terms of feed mills and hog farms, uh, no. ones they own and, and ones uh, where there's a contract arrangement with the producer? Uh, oh, yes, that's true. And the information that uh, has been provided to me, the footprint that Smithfield has in the north central part of the state of Missouri is still going to be there. It's going to be plant production. There is a packing plant local. And then one of the things that I checked on, we have contract growers, of course, for them. Uh, they've been with all the different moves of people that have owned this production facility. And at this point in time, they see no change with contractors. Just going to be the pigs are going to be coming from farther away. Rusty, we appreciate you joining us this weekend. Let's uh, vow to get together again sometime. I would enjoy that. It, it was great to see you, and, and hopefully we can. Thank you so much, Mac. We appreciate the visit, sir. Thank you. State Senator Rusty Black from the 12th District. That's the northwest part of Missouri.